Hey everyone, Aaron from Aaron's Co. here, showing you how to assemble your brand new deluxe series Aaron Snow Throw. If you purchase your snow throw online through a national retail chain store this season, it could show up in your driveway like this, the same crate we boxed it up in at our factory in Brilliant, Wisconsin. And though I'm certain the thought of some assembly required isn't the most appealing to you, I'm here to walk you through the easy step-by-step -step assembly procedure. Trust me, if I can do this, so can you. So as long as you have your gloves and your safety goggles ready, let's begin. Cut the bands to open the crate and remove the cardboard supports on top of the crate. Remove the chute and locate the setup guide that's either in the envelope adhered to the discharge chute or inside the chute. Each snow throw comes with a pictorial assembly guide that can be referenced when assembling this unit. These instructions are a duplicate of the material we're covering in this video. You'll notice the setup guide calls out a few tools. For this procedure, you'll need a socket wrench, a 3 8 inch socket, a 7 16 inch socket, a 1 half inch deep socket, a 9 16 inch socket, a needle nose pliers, and a cutting tool. Remove the chute and the chute rotation rod and set them both aside. Continue removing the inserts from the crate. You'll need to remove the cleanout tool to remove the cardboard on the housing, but then return the cleanout tool to its holder and continue removing the cardboard. Without damaging the unit, carefully cut the box corners so the crate's walls fall flat. Then remove the crate walls from the base to reduce the tripping hazard and give yourself easier access to the unit. Loosen, but do not remove the hardware retaining the upper handlebar assembly to the lower handlebars. Also loosen the shift rod hardware. Cut the zip tie between the dash panel and the rest of the unit. Remove the wrapping from around the hand grips. The clutch levers will spring back when the wrapping is removed. Move the shift lever into the detent farthest to the left and slowly rotate the handlebar assembly into the upright position while making sure the shift rods don't bind. Tighten the handlebar hardware and ensure the upper handlebar assembly is secure. Align the upper shift rod with the lower shift rod hardware set and tighten the shift rod hardware. Remove the hardware from the chute mounting bracket and set it aside. Install the chute over the base and align the pedestal with the mounting bracket. Align the P-clamp on the chute cable with the top mounting hole and reinstall the upper hardware set, then the lower hardware set. At this point, we're only going to finger tighten the hardware because we want the chute to remain loose. Remove the screw retaining the gear cover to the chute pedestal and remove the cover. Remove the spring clip from the chute gear hub. This is easiest by pushing on the end of the spring clip with the needle nose pliers. Peel back the plastic on the control panel and carefully insert the short end of the chute rotation rod into the control panel. 
Then insert the long end of the chute rod into the chute gear hub, align the holes in the rod with the holes in the hub, and reinstall the spring clip. Reinstall the chute gear cover to the chute pedestal with its original screw. Now we can tighten the chute hardware. Ensure the chute cable is routed on the left side of the chute gears and adjust the cable so the white mark is just above the P-clamp. Route the cable through the P-clamp on the engine base and close the clamp with a pliers, but don't close it so tightly that it restricts the cable movement. Move the chute deflector lever to the rearmost detent on the dash panel. Remove the hairpin and the bushing from the deflector lever under the dash. Route the deflector cable over the lower handlebars, pull the rubber boot away from the cable anchor and insert the anchor into the anchor bracket. Install the cable eyelet onto the deflector lever, reinstall the bushing and hairpin removed earlier, and reposition the boot against the cable anchor. Check the function of the chute rotation rod and the chute deflector lever. Remove the auger gear case fill plug and check that the gear case has oil. Gear case oil is dark red and should appear on the bottom of the plug. If no gear case oil is present, set this unit aside and contact Aaron's customer support. If oil is present in the gear case, reinstall the fill plug and tighten. Push the handlebars down and move the unit off the crate pallet. The higher you raise the housing, the easier it is to move the unit off the pallet. Remove the wrapping from the engine, the top of the housing, and wherever else packaging material remains. Remove the literature pack from the handlebars and review its contents. The literature pack contains the operator's manual, engine manual, and other important resources. Remove the dipstick from the engine and verify the oil level is correct. If no oil is present or if the oil level is outside the markings on the dipstick, do not start the unit and contact the retailer where you purchased your unit from. See, I told you that was going to be easy. Now before you start throwing snow, do a final walk around of your product. If you notice any quality issues like damage or missing parts, contact the retailer where you purchased your unit from for replacements. But if your snow throw was everything you expected, register your new unit at errands.com forward slash registration. For help registering your new product, find the product registration instructional video on the Errands YouTube channel. And finally, if you guys like this video and want to see more helpful content from Aaron's, click on the subscribe button to be notified whenever we share a new video that shows you how to service or use your Aaron's Snow Throw.